happen to be working on a 2003 Chevy Blazer with a 4.3 engine. Now there's basically two types of mass airflow sensors out there. One is called a vein airflow type, but probably the most common is the hot wire type, and that's what we've got. So of course it's always good to understand how this works first before we go looking at how to test it. Now in the mass airflow connector you're going to have three wires. One is going to be a ground, the other one is going to be 12 volts coming from the battery, and the other one is going to be the signal wire. Now keep in mind here the ground should be ground. The battery generates the 12 volts, so the 12 volt wire should be coming from the battery. The mass airflow is a frequency generator. It is going to generate a signal and that is going to be sent out on the signal wire. So what is a frequency? Now frequency basically can be explained like this. It's on off time. If we're going to flow current we've got to turn it on and flow some current and then we turn it off. The longer or the shorter the on off time is what the creating of the frequency is. Makes the frequency longer or shorter and that's what we're measuring on the mass airflow. Now we're talking about a hot wire sensor but there's actually two wires inside the mass airflow sensor. One is hot, the other one is cold. Now the cold wire actually just measures the actual temperature of the air that's being rushed in through the mass airflow sensor and it reports that to the computer. The hot wire is maintained by the PCM at 392 degrees. It's an exact temperature because this is an exact measurement. It uses the voltage off that 12 volt wire and it keeps that wire at 392 degrees. Now it's important here to understand that the battery generates the voltage and sends that to the mass airflow. It has a ground, so the mass airflow internally is going to create this frequency. It's a pulse width modulated frequency and that is sent out on the signal wire and that is what we're going to be monitoring. Now just like your weatherman will report to you a wind chill factor when it's windy and it's cold out, and that wind chill makes it feel colder? Well, that's because air passing over something that's hot will cool it. That hot wire is going to cool then as air is rushed past it. The PCM then monitors that temperature, compares it to the actual temperature of the air, and it says we're not at 392 degrees, so it flows more current. Remember, volts don't create heat, current does. So it flows more current over that wire to keep it at 392 degrees. Now this is all happening very, very, very fast, in milliseconds, maybe even microseconds. But because of that, it's actually generating a frequency then, and that's sending that out to the PCM to tell it how much current is needed to keep that wire at a certain temperature. That's what we're monitoring, is the signal wire. It is telling us the frequency, or how fast, how often it has to send current. The more you have anything powered on that is going to send current, the more heat it will send. If it's on for just a little blip of a second, it's not going to be much. If it's on for a little bit longer, it's going to be more heat. That's what we're measuring here, is the amount of current that's flowing, and it's going to be reported to us in a frequency. What about grams per second? Well, air has mass, and mass, all mass has weight. So since it is fast moving air, it is measured in grams per second. So you might assume that grams per second is the input, but the PCM is not a scale. It can't read weight. The PCM is a logic device. It receives input, makes decisions, and sends output. The PCM input is frequency, not grams per second. Grams per second is a calculated value, not an input. Frequency, or hertz, is the input. Grams per second is calculated. You know, it's kind of like reading the alphabet. Now, if this alphabet were in uppercase, it would look like this. But if it were in lowercase, it would look like this. Now, they look different, but they say the same thing. So it's kind of like two ways of looking at the same thing. On the left, a frequency waveform, which is real-time input and on the right is the grams per second waveform, which is a calculated value. Now on the left, the real-time input would be kind of like looking at the uppercase, and the right would be looking at lowercase. Now on the left, the source of the frequency waveform is the actual voltage reading, and on the right, the source 
of the grams per second waveform is a PCM conversion. Well, frequency and grams per second, are they the same? Well, yes and no. So which do we use? Now it is not a matter of right or wrong. It depends on how the OEM designed it. So when you're talking about grams per second versus frequency, the grams per second is more of an indication where frequency is a definitive action. In part two, we'll discuss the actual testing of the mass airflow.